All right, hello people from the internet. Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. The time has come for me to make another non-gameplay video. And today we're going to be talking about Ignis, um, the newest goth to have been added to Crawl. Um, personally, I think of Ignis more of a glorified consumable than a goth. Um, but still, it is a glorified consumable that you get from the very beginning of the game, if you start in Draculite. Um, Ignis is a great god. Um, I started in Wiz mode. Um, I might use Wiz mode from now on um, for these things instead of like just opening a session on the server and doing it in the server. Uh, like if I'm gonna use console, I might as well just use local console anyway. Um, that also allows me to record these if for some reason I don't have internet, so I can just upload them when I do have internet, uh, which is nice. But anyway, Ignis, uh, you start with 155 piety. This really is not um, something that matters for almost all other gods, um, because you start with like no peeps of piety, right? Uh, but with Ignis, you start with this. Um, the thing with Ignis is that you don't gain piety. You cannot gain piety. I think that it would be very funny if you could get uh, piety with Ignis if you were to cast Firestorm. Um, and like kill a bunch of stuff with Firestorm, considering that Ignis is the god of fire, kind of. Um, but unfortunately, it is not the case. Um, it, it really doesn't work like that for Ignis. Um, but yeah, I think that a way for for you to gain piety with Ignis would be cool because um, the things that Ignis does. Well, I guess that I can start uh, with that now. I'm gonna set my piety to 200. You can now rocket upward and away. Um, sure thing. Um, I started in Wiz mode because uh, if I am in the Wiz mode, I can just give myself whatever god I want and I can inspect the abilities, uh, which is extremely useful. Uh, but anyway, Ignis. Ah, well, I guess I can do this. Yeah, Ignis the Dying Flame offers followers power over fire in many forms. All of Ignis' power is offered unconditionally to any who would deign to worship, but once used, it can never be replenished. Yep, Ignis saw our worshippers deserted long ago. The divine fire burns low, and soon it will go out. Um, so, Ignis gives you passive fire resistance. Uh, this actually is really okay. Um, theoretically, this is pretty nice to have if you were to take Ignis into the latter parts of the game, into Sod, for example, um, you know, the land of the Orb of Fire. Ignis definitely will help you not die uh, to Orbs of Fire with uh, Fire Resistance. Obviously, it's very low impact, much, much lower impact than any god should be at that point in the game. Uh, but that's kind of the point. Like, you're not really supposed to worship Ignis for... Um, for very long. You're supposed to use Ignis Piety and then abandon a, a, at some point and go for another god. Uh, something that I really like to do personally is go Ignis into Jiba. Uh, it's something that I've done a couple of times in the past and pretty much every time that I've done it, it's been a pretty successful run um, because Jiba is crazy strong. Yeah, I look forward to talking about Jiba um, as well. I might even record that in this um, same recording session. Uh, but anyway, you can armor yourself in flame. This gives you some armor class and retaliatory damage to anything that hits you. Uh, this ability is super nice. Um, it is extremely uh, strong in the early game because the things that are going to be hitting you don't really have that much HP, so the retaliatory damage can kill them. Um, and the high amount of armor class makes it so that you are most likely just going to win the fights uh, that you're getting into in the early game. Um, so yeah, this ability is fantastic um, for defensive purposes. It costs less than Fox Fire Swarm as well. Uh, and... Um, and it lasts for long, uh, for, a, for a very long amount of time. It's a very interesting ability in that regard. Uh, the long lasting duration is so that you're incentivized to get into a couple of fights uh, with that buff on, um, instead of just like turning it on for one fight and then just like having it be over. Um, uh, 
the next ability of Ignis is this one. You can call a swarm of foxfires against your foes. Um, this, well, <laughs> okay. So nice thing that uh, this allows me to do in the series. I guess I can actually show you examples. When it comes to the fiery armor, it gives me a bit of armor class. Um, in fact, if we read the description of the ability, um, armor yourself in fire, providing plus seven armor class and seeing foes foolish enough to strike you in melee. The fire takes quite a long time to burn out. Seven armor class. It's uh, really nice for this early stage of the game. Um, Foxfire Swarm says, um, can use a swarm of animate flames all around you. These rapidly seek the nearest monsters, burning them. They will dissipate harmlessly if unable to reach a target or if you swap places with them. Yeah, um, it makes a ton of foxfires. In fact, like this room would pretty much get filled by them. Um, if I use it here, like literally every tile will be filled by foxfires. Um, so yeah, it, it makes a lot. And that's not even enough. Like um, these tiles would also have foxfires. So it really is a lot of foxfires that you make. Once again, uh, using that ability will just destroy whatever you need to destroy at this point in the game. I would recommend using it against uh, really difficult things to to fight in the early game, such as Sigmund or um, or Grinder. You know, strong uniques, um, maybe even ogres or maybe orc bands um, that you cannot run away from with multiple wizards. It's a really strong ability for those things. Um, uh, uh, last but not least, we have Rising Flame. You can't rise from this level, of course not, because uh, Rising Flame sends you floating upward, and after a short delay for Ignis to gather enough power, blasts you through the ceiling and into the level above. This ability may only be used once. So, yeah. Um, only one usage of Rising Flame. Um, but the ability is pretty decent. It takes about the same amount of time as teleport would, um, but it is very strong to be able to escape from enemies in such a way. Um, you could even save this for SOT5, pick up the orb, and then use this immediately to um, avoid the danger of a partially completed or potentially um, completely disregarded SOT5 um, and it's a uh, very dangerous array of monsters. Um, so so yeah, there's definitely some small amount of incentive for you to keep Ignis for that long, but you would really be better off with other gods. Um, now, I know that I've been saying all this about Ignis, but let me tell you, Ignis is a really powerful thing to have in the early game. Um, it is powerful up until around uh, the end of Lair, somewhat. Like, um, you should try to use your piety enough uh, so that you are not um, gonna be abandoning Ignis after you're done with Lair. Um, and Ignis, um, and you still have a lot of piety with Ignis. That is, of course, if you want to abandon Ignis. Um, personally, I have never completed a run with Ignis. Um, I like Cinder Acolyte a lot. Probably one of my favorite backgrounds um, because I like um, I like characters with like Scorch. <laughs> Scorch is a great uh, thing to have, uh, and Scorch is a spell that you get if you start as Cinder Acolyte. Um, and uh, I also like characters that don't really struggle a lot through the early game. And I would say that Cinder Acolyte also achieves that goal uh, very well thanks to Ignis. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there eventually comes a point where Ignis just stops being as good as um, as to warrant your worship. And at that point, you should probably abandon for something else. Uh, the job of Ignis is to get you through the early game. Once that has been completed, uh, you can feel free to abandon Ignis. Um, or at least that's what I recommend. Um, followers can armor themselves in flame, call a swarm or foxfires against their foes, or let Ignis hit lift them to another level of the dungeon. However, the guttering flames of Ignis' power will only sustain a limited number of invocations before only flickering embers remain. No matter how depleted, Ignis will always grant followers resistance to fire. Ignis' powers are not affected by invocations. 
Yep, it would be weird for a god of the early game to care about invocations, which is not quite the early game skill. Um, Wrath. Normally, on almost, or rather, on all other videos, I'm gonna tell you, don't abandon gods. Uh, but for Ignis, it's a very special, unique case. Why? Because the Wrath of Ignis is now weaker than that of most other gods. Um, that doesn't mean that Ignis just lets you go for free, but um, Ignis will straight will try to kill you, it's just not gonna be as awful as it would be for pretty much any other god. Apostates will find the resistance to fire stripped away completely. Dangerous. Um, I have died to this at least twice in the past, so do take care of that. Um, will be periodically assaulted by fire elementals. Very risky thing to uh, not have fire resistance and be hit by two or three fire elementals in the open. Yeah, that might be a complicated situation. Do not underestimate this, because that kills. Um, I have died to underestimating this before, so um, yeah, do keep your eyes open um, for the fire elementals. Find their enemies strengthened by fire. I think this gives them haste, might, fire weapons, uh, something along those lines. It's something like that. Um, I don't think it's that terrible. Yeah, the most noticeable thing is the fire elementals. Um, or even have the floor burnt out from the meat them. Yeah, uh, this is literally Ignis, Ignis shafting you. Um, and of course that's really bad, but it, that only starts happening um, after the early game, after Lur, you know, because that's the point where I recommend abandoning Ignis. So at that point getting shafted, it's not really the, the end of the world, it's not the worst thing ever. Um, so yeah, don't be too afraid of this, just like be careful, don't just go around and uh, think that you can't tap the fire elementals without even repositioning or anything, because that might end uh, very poorly for you. Experience and cautious adventures will likely overmaster these assaults. This is the game telling you, it's okay to abandon Ignis. I know it's weird, because it's not okay to abandon all other gods, but it's okay to abandon this one. Uh, Ignis Ride lasts for a relatively short duration. Yeah, you get not that many uh, effects of Wrath, but they do come. Um, the way that Wrath Gore works in this game, I don't think that I've talked about it in any of my other videos before, um, you need to gain experience. Back in the day, it was a common technique to dig a hole, grab a bunch of food, and just hide in the hole while you wait for uh, the wrath to time out. It, was, it, it was like a couple of uh, thousand turns. Well, I mean, by, by a couple of thousand, I mean like tens of thousands. I think it was around 40,000 turns to wait out uh, the wrath of a god. Um, pretty boring thing to do. I've done it before. Fortunately, no such thing is in the game anymore. Um, but yeah, like... Um, you cannot do that with Ignis. I'm only mentioning it for the sake of trivia, of old time crawl. Um, I um, think it's perfectly fine to abandon Ignis, of course, but you do have to be careful uh, once again. Abandoning Ignis without actually being able to abandon Ignis can definitely end in pretty disastrous manners. Um, so yeah, um, that's all that I really have to say about Ignis. Ignis is really good. Uh, oh, one more thing, one more thing. You cannot really choose to go Ignis, because if that was the case, everyone would go Ignis, because Ignis is the single most powerful god for the early game. Um, with Ignis, it's very difficult to not die in the... or like to... to yeah, very difficult to die in the early game. That That's right, uh, that's what I meant. Um, you cannot go Ignis, because no Ignis alt arts generate. Sometimes you get Ignis as one of the options in the Fatal Altars. Um, I am in Wiz mode, so I think that I might be able to generate a Fatal Altar. Um, altar, Altar, Altar... Dungeon Features... You cannot make an Altar like that? Huh. Huh. No idea. Um, I am not a master of um, of of Wismos because I do not really use this at all. Like uh, almost the entirety of my crawl time has been on the servers, and in the servers you don't really get access to this. 
so I don't really know how to how to use this um, out of memory. You know, lots of commands, as you can see here. Um, but anyway, I'm sure that there is a way to make an altar. I'll have to figure it out eventually. I thought that it would be in dungeon features, but there's nothing in dungeon features. Um, yeah, but anyway. Uh, the only ways to go Ignis, as I've mentioned, Fatal Altar or starting a Cinder Acolyte. Those are the two only ways to go Ignis. Um, and that's perfectly fine. If you get Ignis from Fatal Altar, enjoy, and eventually you will have the chance to go Jiva if you happen to get access to an altar of, G um, to an altar of Jiva in, in Lur. If it doesn't happen, it's perfectly fine. You can just go whatever god you feel like you want to go. Uh, if making a god choice after like so much time has passed is um, it's way easier. It's like you know what your character is gonna do. You have already seen a good amount of the things that the game has to offer. You have an idea of what's the best choice. Um, for a god, uh, for a character, in case that your character doesn't have access to Jiba. Um, but yeah, I really do recommend the Ignis into Jiba um, sequence. Like, um, it really it really has my seal of approval. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's it for Ignis. Now, for real, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for your continued support. I appreciate it all, and I hope you have a nice rest of your night. And thank you to my supporters on Patreon, Anthony Emergence, Blink and Die, Dulas Vol, Inon, Grafophilia, Fede, Fro, Shaper, Merlin, and Alistair. I appreciate you all for your very generous contributions. Um, when I started, I didn't ever think that I was going to get to the point where I would have 10 Patreons. Um, I didn't even think that I was going to start a Patreon, but I definitely appreciate the continued support. Um, thank you, everyone, for, you know being able or for letting me you know continue to to provide for uh, me and my mom and everything i appreciate your contributions very very much